With the focus narrowing down on the top four in points, it's worth noting that only one of them has won a race. Kenneth McCullough Jr. holds a very comfortable gap to those trailing. Also, only eight points separate second to fifth. So the pressure is on this in this game of musical chairs to not be caught without a seat after Charlotte. Today could decide who is on the back foot as we get ready to watch round eight of the FEGPC iRacing Flea Market Winter Truck Series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Adam Young. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Atlanta is a beast of a circuit and with its high banking and tire chewing pavement. Let's head down to the track guide and really get a feel for what it's like to drive around. Hello everyone and welcome to the Atlanta Motor Speedway. My name is Brian Yazik and I'll be taking you for a spin around Atlanta in the GSRC Silverado. Atlanta is a fun track, very bumpy, but the drivers love it because there's plenty of room to roam around this one and a half mile oval. For your hot lap, you're going to be swinging it right through the middle of the track here, cutting the dog leg a little bit with your left side tires, driving it down into turn one, and you're going to lift out of the throttle from full throttle down to about 90% and then get almost right back immediately into it. You're doing that just to let the nose set on the truck so it doesn't plow off of the corner. Turn three, you're going to drive it right in until you see the yellow sign. Roll out of it probably to about 60% throttle, keeping on that white line right there on the bottom, and then back into the gas and swinging it back out to the wall. As the run progresses and tires and fuel fade off, you might see guys in turns one and two take this sort of line through here. So what this will do is this doesn't put as much strain on that right front tire, and it gives it more grip through the corner. Plus, it gives you an amazing run off the back stretch, which you could potentially use to set up a pass going into turn three. Turn three still on the bottom. You will hear guys roll out of that throttle all the way out just to let it set right back out to the wall and cutting the dog leg a little bit. Atlanta is going to be a blast. The Silverado trucks will create a great draft. So you're going to see a lot of great passing, a lot of great passing opportunities. And all in all, it's just going to be a great race. So without further ado, let's get back to the action. My name is Brian Yazik, and this was a lap around the Atlanta Motor Speedway. You see what some of these truck drivers are going to be experiencing out there today. But Adam, this is a track that has gone through some changes and yet it has been a bit of a stalwart here in NASCAR. Yeah. You know, and this is, this is, I'm going to get my time up on the soapbox out of the way early today. And Sean should just make a graphic that says Adam soapbox at some point, but I miss the old 19 before 1996 layout because, Oh, it was, it was, different you know and then we went all cookie cutter with it but even then it's not exactly cookie cutter like charlotte it is actually a touch longer than charlotte at 1.54 miles the banking's different it's also smoother the transitions aren't exactly the same way but in today well we're gonna see just how different it is but 100 laps worth a very high speed action here at charlotte i'll tell you at atlanta i had charlotte on the brain at atlanta and i'll tell you these trucks they are lightning quick around here you're going almost full throttle most of the time and uh, these guys will get up there and set lower, you know, about 29 nines, uh, 30 second laps all the day long here at the Sh Atlanta Motor Speedway. So that's going to be an interesting and a fun one to watch, Joe. Absolutely. And for what it's worth, I'm actually with you. I, I, I miss the old plain oval version. <laughs> it just seemed to kind of stand apart or would stand apart now. But uh, let's also take a look at the championship here. I mentioned a little bit about it in the pre-race and. Uh, right now, Clint Cox is uh, leading this. I'm not sure that this is... Oh, it has updated since I last uh, looked at the points. So, Clint Cox is your leader, actually. Kenneth McCullough Jr. Uh, sitting in third now with Matthew Lee uh, in the fourth position, pretty close to him. Only four points behind. Brad Bothwell uh, is much farther down. 15 points to make up to get up in those top four, which is really what matters. It's not leading the championship. It's being within the top four. In case we have viewers who are new to the series, Adam, what's our race details? 
Yeah, of course, round eight of an 11. It's been an exciting season so far. I mean, tight points battle. We've had some great races out there, and that's going to continue on. They are running fixed setups here, and we do get one fast repair in this series, and that has come to play a role in uh, some races here this season so far. If it does come down to it, we will get two attempts at a green-white checkered later on today. And we're hearing there's an update that there isn't a fast repair. We'll make sure and try and clear that, clarify that for you. But before we get to that, we want to remind you about our sponsor, FEG PC. FEG PC builds gaming PCs, and they've built over 1,300 units for iRacers. Their customers include Peak Pro drivers Malik Ray and Nicholas Shelton, as well as professional driver coach Enzo Mucci, YouTube top oval personality Jason Jacoby, iRacing staff, and a host of other real racing drivers. FEG PCs start as low as $5.95 and all come with iRacing pre-installed, as well as major third-party apps to make it as plug-and-play as possible. In addition, the company has agreements with most of the top sim equipment companies in the business and can be your one-stop shop for racing cockpits, wheels, pedals, shifters, and much more. You just order, sit at home, and it arrives. All of their computers come with a three-year back-to-front warranty and free tech support via remote service. FEG PC is a family-owned and operated business and has 10 years of sim racing experience. You can find them at FEGPC.net. We're also brought to you by the iRacing Flea Market. The iRacing Flea Market is a Facebook page with over 12,000 members buying and selling used and new sim racing products. The link is in the YouTube description below if you're interested in checking it out. So qualifying is happening right now, but we're still waiting on a few drivers to uh, complete their single lap that they're working on. I know Jeff was down there talking to the drivers just before they went over to the qualifying session. Uh, Jeffrey Smith, our pit reporter here today. Jeff, did you find out any interesting news or is it all pretty much uh, business as usual down there? It seems like business as usual, guys. The, the, the drivers all over are telling me we're we're tight and fast, which is really confusing to me because I always thought it loose is faster, but it sounds like tonight we're gonna be pedal to the floor and some really, really tight racing. So I look forward to this one. It looks like it's gonna be a really, really good one. Just was able to look through the stats here and it is indeed correct that there is no fast repair tonight. So you break it, you bought it. And you talked about the high speeds here, Adam. I have a feeling that uh, break it is probably what drivers will do if they get into trouble. Yeah, you don't hit anything soft here. This is one of those tracks where, you know, if you go sliding, in particular, I'm thinking coming out of turn two, you're gonna be finding yourself in that back stretch inside wall. And you're, I've seen wrecks happen a lot here where you actually hit that wall and they get thrown back up onto the track before you have a chance to lock down the brakes. So. Hopefully that doesn't happen tonight, but that is one of the trouble spots here if that back end decides it wants to come around, which also makes it interesting that if these guys are reporting that they're tight overall, I mean, how long is it going to take before we start burning off tires and actually goes from a very tight condition to a shockingly loose condition, maybe toward the tail end of a run? That's a possibility too. I've seen it happen. So uh, we'll just be keeping an eye on that, uh, all the storylines here. I know it's uh, looking a little bit late in the day here, but the sun won't be setting as they've set to uh, static time conditions here. So basically it's going to be permanently late in the afternoon. Uh, the weather though uh, is actually pretty ideal in spite of that. It's only 78 degrees Fahrenheit on the track surface. So at least that will be in their favor. Uh, and you can see very little wind out here today as well as we watch Kenneth McCullough Jr. finish his second lap. Uh, apologies, I got that wrong. There are two laps that they have in a qualifying here with a 29.8. That puts him up to third. Yeah, just looking around at some of these other times. Uh, uh, David McCullough showing he's quick. Yes, he, uh, Kenneth McCullough. So the, uh, the, the brothers will be starting nose to tail here tonight, which will be interesting. I don't see anybody else out on track, Joe, as uh, we're coming to an end of the session here. Yep, and that should be our grid set then. So why don't we go through that starting grid here today. David McCullough on the pole with David Santini next to him on the front row. A pair of Davids up there. Kenneth McCullough Jr. is going to be behind them in third. On the outside of row two, it's Josh Bondwell. He'll be starting P4 with Ricky Howell Jr. in the fifth position. Aaron Smith starts P6 today. 
Then you've got Matthew Lee, who's been hovering around the top dry, uh, top in points. He's in fourth right now, so kind of on the bubble. He'll start seventh today. Gregory Brandenburg, P8, and Tim No in ninth. And Brad Bothwell rounds out your top ten. Yeah, coming in in 11th here tonight is going to be Jared Ix. Uh, he will start there in row six alongside Andrew Melvin. Clint Cox and RJ Corson will be in row seven. Hayes Booth and Peyton Howell will be making up row eight. Row nine is going to belong to Jim Westerfield and Marty Porter. Julia McLean and Steve McGaffey will make up row 10 starting 19th and 20th. 21st goes to Jade Bell. Mark Wilson will be P22, and then Jose Medina in the 23rd spot. Tobias Eckenberg, all the way down to 24th for him with Braden Johnson in 25th. The outside of that row has Eli Warren in 26th. Brandon Bullock will be starting in 27th, and then it'll be Ray Jackson next to him. Joshua Cadill is 29th. Last two drivers there to get a time with Tyler Clough in 30th. Everybody else didn't set one. We'll be starting at the back of the grid. That includes Rittenauer, Quick, Rucker, Ross, Radke, and, well, the other Rucker, Travis and William, both starting at the tail end of the field. We'll get one pace lap, and then we will be getting going today. 100 laps of racing. Jeff, uh, you're the one that's got the most experience uh, with these guys and with how this whole thing tends to unfold in this league. What are you expecting pit stop-wise today? I expect uh, Tyler Pluff and Andrew Melvin, they're going to wait till the last, very last minute. Bothwell is going to go early. Uh, I'd say probably McCullough will go early, but everybody else is pretty much going to be right in between those guys. But those are the extremes that I'm looking for tonight, for sure. All right, we'll keep an eye out to see who is uh, who among them is going to do as expected. We've got a lot on the line in this series, uh, not just in the championship, but in the race tonight as we get going here in just a second behind the pace car. $75, go to the race winner, and then one random driver who completes at least 80% of the laps is going to be chosen for $100. They're going to pick that on the Facebook page there for the iRacing flea market. Uh, so reason for you to go check that out and see who wins that. And then the champion of the series, uh, chosen or well not chosen but to wins it all at homestead amongst those top four gets uh five hundred dollars cash or hoisingfeld sprint pedals so there is uh definitely a hefty little prize if you take it all yeah i know and it, there's some big parts in there too about you know with with the completing 80 percent of the laps now that random drawing you talked about and also the bonus points that you get for completing a half part of the race and also running at the end so there's a lot of incentive in this series to stay running stay on the track and it's actually one of my favorite things about it and interestingly we've got a few of our front runners seemingly starting from the pits including Westerfield because right now Ricky Howell Jr. looks to be sitting on the pole and is going to be taking the green flag not sure what happened there we'll try and clarify that but in the meantime the pace car peels in Howell has control of the field green flag is out a little bit of a bump there on the outside row as whoever was in, uh, on the second row there tried to get going early otherwise it looks pretty clean here as they come down into turn one Looks like everybody's getting up to speed pretty smoothly. Yeah, so far, no problems at all. Yes, some side-by-side -side racing to be expected here at Atlanta. We're not going to go single file right away for sure. In fact, I think passing is going to be something we'll see quite often here tonight. We might even, oh, I think we got this lady having a little bit of trouble in the back. That's Julia McClain. Julia McClain's going to get bumped. She's going to go sliding here through between two and three. Back on the apron, back up on the track. We stay green. Very slow in the number 20, and that actually causes a checkup behind her. Jeffrey Radke slaps the wall trying to avoid her. Otherwise, everybody keeps it going. Up at the front, it's Ricky Howell Jr. leading Matthew Lee, looking for those precious points to make him safer. Aaron Smith is in third. Centini is back and forth, and Bothwell rounds out your top five. Yeah, other than that one little incident right there, everything has stayed clean. Those guys that started on pit road are out on track again. Of course, with the Cullet Brothers running together, Bothwell behind them, and then Jim Westerfield, even a good ways back. Jim Westerfield 
He's already on the same straightaway as the leaders. He's coming into three while they're coming out of two. So just to recap, those guys that started in the pits. Pretty much single file up at the front, as you can see. Everybody hugging that low line a long ways back. It's looking rather patient. Let's head back to 20th position. We got Jose Medina in a nice little fight here. Braden Johnson involved with that, as well as Ray Jackson and Eli Warren. Up on the high side, that's Warren in the number 10. Medina riding low. They're going to stay side by side, although the number four of Jackson managing to pull a little bit ahead of Braden Johnson, who gets down tucked in behind him. Yeah, some of these guys kind of got broken up a little bit when Julia McLean was having her trouble earlier on. So they're not in that, that they kind of lost part of the, uh, the big pack in front of them, but still running okay. When Warren suddenly finds himself slipping backwards, he goes to the tail of that group which is rocking up just behind Tobias Eckenberg and Mark Wilson in 18th and 17th. You got a battle for the lead, Joe. Matthew T. Lee taking the lead here from Ricky Howe. Oh, and they've been contact. Oh. He's going to go around through one and two. Can he save it? He saves it somehow. He can't say the same for the guys behind him. Big, big mash up there in turn two. I see a truck on its side. Yeah, looks like Brandenburg involved. So this all started with Lee up on that high side, just starting to lose it as more cars pile into it after the caution even comes out. And it's poor Clint Cox who comes upon the wreck with nowhere to go as Lee's trying to catch it. Let's see if we can pull up the replay. Lots of guys, night just ended right there. Yeah, absolutely. I guess they might try and get it repaired to get it back out to get 80% of the laps in. I see Aaron Smith, he's in the yellow number 70 who gets plowed up into the wall. RJ Corson is the one riding next to him. Big hit for Marty Porter too. Truck gets in the air when he gets hit. That was from Jose Medina. Looking to see if we had any good escapes here. I think Steve McGaffey did a good job avoiding the action. He's the number 21. Here we go. Let's take a look at the replay with him. Starts to see it happen. Just kind of picks his way. Ooh, nicely done. So with that, we've already got pit stops happening. And it looks like Hayes Booth stays out. So with only three or four laps on the tires, he's willing to risk it. Let's head down to Jeff. I know he's watching to see who's doing what. Is there Are there any people risking two tires out here, Jeff, or anything unusual happening? It doesn't look like we got any two tire stops, but we do have some major, major, major implications from that wreck. Uh, Andrew Melvin was in that. Matthew T. Lee has been good all season. He was in that. I saw a few others uh, running higher in the points that, that really, this really, really hurt them. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that affects later on in the season. I see Brad Bothwell, who's the one chasing Lee. He's in fifth place on the outside looking in at the top four. He's down to 23rd. I think he had a bit of a long stop there, but he's coming back out. Matt Quick also is in sixth. So where is he right now after that incident? He's down in 17th. So not really in a good position to take advantage of Lee's mistakes, but they aren't too drastically far apart in points. So this could be enough. Yeah, it's definitely going to make things interesting. That was the big thing about that is it just, it, it, it's going to shake things up so much. I mean, there was a bunch of guys that shouldn't have gotten into that that did. And the other part that does too is a lot of those guys that started in the pits, that's going to move them up numerous spots. Certainly will. And that's kind of what I suspect they were banking on is to stay out of trouble and catch an early caution, get back in the game. 
I mean, it uh, it almost worked for me last Wednesday at the PRL race. So, I mean, I can't really complain too much about that kind of move. <laughs> exactly. And then, of course, you know, slid through my pit stall and it all went back from there. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, poor Aaron Smith is not happy I'm seeing from the chat. Seems pretty displeased with how that wreck unfolded. That certainly ruined his day. Of course, let's see. I'm trying to see. Yeah, he's 12th in points, so he's a long ways out of the top four. This probably was his last hope from here on out. It's going to be tough for him to try and make his way into the hunt for the final round. Only a one lap or one race chase in this series. Just Homestead for the top four. Try and sort it all out. So we go double file once again. See a couple more guys coming in from just outside the top 10. Is this going to set the tone of this race? Are we going to have drivers who are under the gun to try and get back in it? Will we be having more incidents that maybe give them a chance to get a decent result? Should be Hayes Booth restarting on the top spot as he did not pit. It's only 10 laps on those tires, and about half of them have been under caution. So it shouldn't be too bad. You know, the other thing we saw, too, is that uh, last race that we covered with the trucks, we had some very uh, interesting, an interesting mix of strategies in terms of tires. So... This new tire model on it, I wonder if we're going to see some of the same today as not everybody is uh, up to all the iterations that are possible strategy-wise with them. All right, pace car heading on into pit lane. Hayes Booth on the loud pedal. Centini follows. Centini is looking strong, though, as they start to pick up pace. The number five still side by side as they come down into the first corner. In fact, those behind them already stretching away from the rest of the group. That's No and Bonwell. They're both also still side by side, trying to sort out this front four spots. Yeah, the front four really got started. Just a great launch right at the green flag. And uh, just uh, nobody else really behind them seemed to have as good of a start. A few checkups and everything else. But Hayes Booth showing uh, they maybe get that track position wasn't a bad idea i think if he can hold the inside line here for a little while and wait for the other guys' tires to wear out he's got a chance to stay up here okay slips back to second with centini now taking the lead oh no excuse me booth is back in front of centini oh good move by centini there to try to take that inside line away from hayes booth he's gonna get it he'll slide into first here as they go through three and four Ooh, and he immediately ducks underneath him to see if he could pull a similar move, but that doesn't quite work out. The momentum is not there for the number five. Tim No back in third now. Bondwell in fourth. Behind them, they've gotten single file, so drivers like Jade Bell, number 14, are actually reeling them back in. Just to give you an idea how fast these guys are still going here, under green flag conditions, in race conditions, Centini was only one one hundredth of a second off of his qualifying time. So they are certainly flying. Already on lap 14 now. Sweet. Look at Booth trying to do what he can there in second place to get back that lead or at least hold on to this top spot. And so far, so good. He doesn't seem to be dropping back. I'd say that Campbell was a wise one. Yeah, he's definitely staying up there very nicely. Doesn't seem like his truck is ill handling at all, running comparable lap times. He's definitely making sure that if Tim Noe's going to try to get around him, he's going to have to go around him through the outside. And Bonwell's ready to right there, ready to pounce as well. But as those guys got single file, the guys behind him going fifth on back, they got single file more early, and they've already caught up to that front four. Looking through on some of our top competitors in the points, Cox is still in 15th, Lee's in 18th. Uh, looking for Melvin as well, and I'm not finding him as quickly. Oh, he's down to 28, so he's definitely suffering. Yeah, and I think, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, you had a uh, report on uh, damage on Clint Cox a minute ago. Yeah, it looks like Clint Cox's nose isn't as bad as maybe it could be. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how bad it is. A lot of his damage looks like to be on the on the rear end. 
and uh, I think he he might be okay. And you know, I was watching Melvin just now. Yeah. He is extremely slow out on the track. He's almost a bit of a roadblock here. I don't know if we want to put the camera on him, but you can. There's yeah. what a good 20 mile an hour difference. Well, he's about seven seconds a lap slower that last time by than everybody else around him. I mean, he's already uh, three laps down to the field. He's just trying to hang on and maybe trying to get those bonus points. Back up front, we got a bit of a battle for fifth place. This is between Jade Bell and. Uh, Looks like Braden Johnson trying to take that top five away. Johnson's down on the low side in the number 81. He's going to slip back into line easily. Bell falls in as well in the number 14. Back back there behind them. That's number 51 of Eckenberg sitting in seventh. Right on board Eckenberg here got a good view of what's going on behind him as uh, some of the front part of the pack is snaking around a little bit just trying to use that draft as best they can at this point but he himself not making many moves i'll tell you who's looking racy up in that front pack right now joe is uh josh bonwell he is just hunting to try to get around tim no in fact he's going to duck to the low side there you see it on screen the 56 manages to take away the bottom line from tim no the double on does his best to try and carry the speed off the corner, but they're going to stay door to door as they block the path for Braden Johnson behind them. Although he's going to get a nose in under the right uh, left rear quarter panel of Tim No now, so this might actually be two spots down for the double zero. And these guys are going to get ready to oh, catch no. up to Melvin again. Oh, contact! That's Tim No. Tim No makes contact again. Who is that with them? That's Ray Jackson. And Eckenberg. Oh. Yeah, we saw that live as it happened. I, I kind of worried about the move that I saw. Uh, I think that was uh, Johnson, yeah, starting to make. Just kind of tucked his nose in, and it didn't look like there was space there, and indeed there was not. Oh. Nose starts to lose it. Everybody else behind scatters. Eckenberg winds up with some of the worst of it, a bunch of hits, and poor Ray Jackson actually blows his engine in the process. Yeah, he's just coasting around right now, trying to get back to pit road, but his truck's all tore up. McGaffey was in that again. Uh, I thought at first that McGaffey had a miraculous way around it, but ultimately he actually did end up clipping part of that, and he was involved in that wreck earlier, so. Yeah, a tough night for McGaffey with just a little bit of damage in both wrecks, but still still in seventh. The driver who had a great call in that was Ricky Howell Jr. Started on what effectively became our pole position. He basically just jumped it up high and hugged the wall, missed everything, and that gained him a lot of spots. Yeah, just try to go for the self-cleaning aspect of the racetrack, and thankfully it worked out for him. He didn't. Uh, everybody just kind of filtered down on that one. He didn't really see anybody really shoot back up the track after he had that initial contact. Meanwhile, I see a lot of people joining Jeff down on pit lane. Jeff, do you got any news? It looks like Brayden Johnson might have some some pretty severe front front uh, front right damage. Sorry, and uh, he that's going to be detrimental to him as we've seen with melvin and and he's not high in points but he's he's hanging around there that's going to be huge for him looks like clint cox might be back up front that's going to be interesting matthew t lee looks like he might have stayed out it, these guys are really 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 itching for these points and yeah you're right about some of those drivers really taking advantage of the issues that we're seeing towards the front of the pack. I see Kenneth McCullough Jr. and Matt Quick ran through pit lane and elected not to come into their stalls if I'm seeing timing and scoring correctly. Kenneth oh. is coming back down now. Yeah. I think they're still just trying to stay in the back. I think this is a strategy call from Matt Quick, though, knowing that if that he could potentially get himself into the top four because this puts him up in first now. Centini is going to be behind him in second. Josh Bonwell is in third, and Hayes Booth is in fourth. And Matthew Lee back up to the top five. Wow. We're 
already had looked at the way through this race. And of course, Matt Quick with probably the uh, most colorful car in the series. You know, but <laughs> I think we've talked about his truck here before. But uh, he's he's going to have to hold off some guys that are really quick here today, though, too, behind him. But uh, he was one of those guys that really kind of uh, planned on that strategy of just staying in the back. Now he's thinking it's time to go ahead and get back up front. But since he needs Bonwell and Booth, I mean, they're showing some real good speed here for today. That's going to be tough for him to stay there. Well, if someone's stinking things up, they got to clean the litter box and get back into it. So as we, uh, oh, and Quick is going to come down pit lane too. All right. So he wants to go back to, to the, the back, back again, I guess. Yeah. He, he must be you thinking know, that uh, they're not done yet. I don't always totally understand some of the strategies in this series, but then I'm not an oval racer, so... All right, we're going to be one to go here. Uh, you can see we've gone double file, so instead it's going to be Centini, Bonwell, Booth, and Lee for your top four now. Now these guys, uh, that the front two rows got a great start, the last restart. Be interested to see if they can get, uh, get that same jump they did again, except, uh, you know, the, the trick is it going to be this time again, Joe, is uh, don't let that second pack catch you again so quickly because that's when things really started to get jumbled up again. Absolutely. But from what we've seen, Booth seems to be handling the uh, his strategy pretty well. I think he can hold his own. Question is whether or not all the other drivers can, because it's been so uh, two relatively large wrecks here, a number of trucks involved that uh, probably shouldn't have been and are certainly not very happy about it. Seeing a lot of pit stops. Uh, on my timing and scoring for a number of drivers for how few laps we've had, some as many as four and five already. All right, green flag is out. We get underway once more. Santini leading the way. Very good jump for him. Josh Bonwell back in second, slots into line immediately. In fact, pretty much single file through the top five before you finally get to people trying to sort things out. I think Rucker is holding up uh, is that Ricky Howell Jr. wants to get down to the low line? Just thinking about the last few weeks, and it's, it's you know, if I had to pick one guy that's been the best on any kind of starts or restarts, it's been David Santini. Time and time again, he's just shown us that he's got these restarts down packed. A little bit of side by side between Lee and Fluff. Remember, Lee's got damage on that truck. We don't know how competitive it is. Even though he's gotten back out and climbed his way up, it's been mostly through strategy. Down to the inside goes Rucker on Eli Warren. This is going to be for sixth position. Rucker looks like he's probably going to have this as Warren drifts up high, and that long way around just isn't coming in yet. Yeah, Lee up there, he isn't going to He isn't gonna let... Uh, I mean, he's just going to let uh, Travis Rucker go. He goes to the high side. Oh, look at Ricky Howell. He kind of drifts up a little bit, drifts up a lane. But uh, they're all able to stay off each other that time. That's one thing. If I'm if, if I'm Matthew T. Lee, you know, if I could just slip in behind somebody. I think he has a chance of staying up there just because that damage on his front end. You know, I don't think it's going to be affecting his horsepower or anything else like that. Just a little bit of drag. So try to take that drag off your front end if you can get back in line. Right now, the, car, or the truck that he doesn't want to pass him, though, is doing so right this second. Clint Cox, who leads him in the points is going to take that away. So Clint up to seventh. Lee does slip in behind him just before Eli Warren can try and get around. You can see some of the damage on the back of Cox's truck, though the spoiler looking all sorts of bent up. Trucks are getting ready to come up here on uh, Steve McGaffey, who we've already talked about his struggles here today. They'll have to get around him and then uh, uh, Melvin is it going to be too far in front of them. The worst case here is right now is they might catch both those trucks at the same time and they're both going different speeds. So McGaffey is going to take a little bit of a high line to stay out of their way. Give everybody the preferred racing line. Same thing with uh, Melvin. 
almost, almost looked like a multi-class road course race there on the, on the Daytona road course. You know, slowest class up top, middle class in the middle, and fastest class at the bottom of contact. Melvin's back to the wall. Ooh, Mark Wilson just got sent into orbit. Yeah, I saw some traffic coming up behind him. I wondered if that was going to be an issue. Going three wide for a few of them. That was more of a glitch there for Wilson. Yeah, he kind of got caught with that wall deal after that contact. To be fair to Melvin, I don't know why Wilson didn't give him more space. The 13 just suddenly looked like he moved back up high right before the turn, right when there was a truck there. Yeah, that was, that's just an odd one. And I, I want to say Matt Quick, I think he got a piece of Mark Wilson's truck when it was coming back down. Yeah, Melvin was holding his line. I, I, I can't really fault the, the 37 there. No, I don't think it's his fault at all. I think he's just out there trying to survive and all of a sudden, you know, just kind of gets stored. And I did go back and look, and Matt Quick's truck is okay, but whew, there probably wasn't more than a half inch from that truck falling from the sky in him. We got more drivers taking alternate strategies. Bonwell and Booth stay out. Uh, Centini the first in. Looks like everybody taking usual stops still not seeing much in the way of two tire strategy centini going to be the first out but it's a drag race to the line behind him I think howell got it over pluff well we are a third of the way through the race or just about to there so we're going to take a short break after all these cautions We'll come back with more racing here at Atlanta. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. We are in round eight for the FEGPC iRacing Flea Market Winter Truck Series. And Josh Bonwell is going to be your leader coming back. Hayes Booth and he both stayed out during the last pit stops here under caution. Centini and Howell will be on that second row. So how's this going to play out? We have uh, about 13 laps on those tires up at the front for those two. But as we've seen, 
Uh, new tires doesn't seem to do a whole lot until we get more on them. Maybe it needs to be about 15, 16 laps before you start to see a bit of a difference. And can Josh Bonwell handle having the control of the field once the pace car pulls in? We wait for that Mustang to give way. Going to duck down into the lane. Bonwell holds it. Now he gets on the loud pedal, though. Green flag is out. Very good jump from the number 56. Santini, though, immediately up the inside of Booth in the number five. Ooh, is a loose truck is up high. That's Travis Rucker going around. Caution is out. Everybody scatters, and they've all avoided him. Nicely done. What happened to the 78, though? I just suddenly saw a bunch of wiggles. Oh, he got help. He got some help. Matthew uh, Lee. Ooh, yeah. It, the, the 04 truck just barely nudged him going into turn one. See it right here from the helicopter. And, woo! That was the 78 who spun. This is on board Lee. There's the contact. Lee was in a hurry. He knew he knows he's bad on speed, so he was trying to get going. Well, maybe a little bit too much in a hurry. Um, it's amazing that the 78, the number 78, managed to uh, be avoided by everybody around him. He was the one who spun. Gotta be scary being sideways like this as everybody's restarting. And Matthew Lee has been given an EOL penalty here for the uh, for the restart. Not surprised on that one. Hard to hard to really excuse it. Everybody coming. Well, not everybody coming down pit lane. A few drivers coming down pit lane. It seems. see looks like we've got matthew lee in bothwell x westfield is down on pit lane quick is in there as well as rittenauer but jeff what a what a weird assortment that we have up at the top and we're getting decently far into this race yeah joe this is wild uh, you know you always know that there's guys lurking back there that just waiting for the right time to kind of kick it up a notch and, and make their way to the front. Ricky Howell, Hayes Booth, you know, Tyler Pluff, he, he's kind of a top 10 car. Clint Cox, is he's there, but he's got some damage. We'll see what happens. But like William Rucker, these guys, you know, they're just lurking in the, in the shadows, just waiting to pounce. And it looks like tonight may be their chance. Let's see, shouldn't get the one to go this time by. I believe we'll go around one more time before that happens. See Braden Johnson also coming in to get some work done. We've only got 20 trucks left on the lead lap out of our 36 starters. That's how, just how many are under the gun right now to try and make up ground, make up a full lap or more just to try and get back in the game. You know, it's it's tough now. I mean, because if you're one lap down, chances are you've got quite a bit of damage. I mean, we still got trucks in lead lap that have quite a bit of damage. And looking at Peyton Hale pulling out, uh, looks like uh, Westerfield is as well, coming back out on the track along with the Color Brothers. I just, I, I don't know, Joe. I, I just uh, have a feeling we may not be quite done yet with the action. Of the drivers who are surviving all this chaos, it looks like, uh, well, Melvin has DNF, so he's done for the day. Clint Cox is doing very, very well. He's up in six, despite getting some damage himself. Kenneth McCullough Jr., who uh, uh, has fallen well down the order, he's still in 17th, it seems. He came in on those last pit stops. Let's see. Matthew Lee, we just saw, of course, had to... Uh, fall downwards because of the penalty. That actually put him behind Kenneth McCullough. In fact, a uh, few behind him. He's down to 19th now. And where's Matt Quick as well? Quick is up to 13th, and he's just in pit lane, actually coming 
right back out. So he's going to fall down a couple more spots as drivers stream on by. Those are your top four there in the points and kind of where they sit at the moment in this race. Again, this is not the final before they decide the top four, though. That's going to be next week at Charlotte, which sadly we won't be able to cover here on GSRC. But uh, you really don't want to have to be under pressure into that last round there, Adam. No, you don't. Do you want to try to uh, leave yourself feeling a little bit better? And uh, that's probably not going to be the case for uh, some of these guys. It looks like it's going to be a pretty tight battle with the, you know, especially some of the names we had drop out today. All right, we're in, we're double file and we're into turn three now. It's going to be Bonwell once again up at the top. Didn't see a whole lot of changes up there uh, just because the caution came so quickly after we got the restart. Hopefully it'll be a little bit smoother this time. Mustang pace car gets ready to release that number 56. Green flag is out. Bonwell on it. Oh, horrible start back there from somebody. Number five, that was Booth. Just was sleeping and everybody behind had to check up. Bonwell had a great start. That guy there, it's Centini that's having to slip back into third. He's behind Ricky Howell Jr. So your top looks like a six or seven trucks here or the line before it gets back to Hayes Booth and then uh, Eli Warren. Eli Warren now on the inside. And don't look now. Here comes David McCulloch. Close battling here, including up with our top three. So we can see them just up ahead riding on board with David McCullough right now. McCullough below Hayes Booth trying to take the spot away, but he can't drift up quite yet because Booth is still out there. On the high line, up ahead, Eli Warren. Ooh, and Eli might actually lose his spot as well. David McCullough with that butt machine making steady progress. That's going to give him seventh now. And I'm going to challenge. I'm liking David McCullough here so far. Now that he's decided he wants to go ahead and go, he's moving. He's got that tight battle there with Clint Cox and Jeffrey Radke right in front of him. And Radke, both these trucks actually have at least a little bit of damage. You see some smoke. Who's that on the inside? That's, Looks like that's... Brandon Bullock's engine finally let go. Yep, yep. He... Oh, no, there was an accident. That was uh, Jared Ix and Steve McGaffey got into it. Must have happened. Oh, yeah, it happened off the racing the line. Yellow. Yeah, there's about a, a lap ago with the number 17 and uh, the number 21. Let's see if we got the replay. McGaffey had to take it into the pits. He was the number 21 there. This is the incident. Kind of starts to their outside as well. So this will happen on the back stretch. Yeah. It was the back straightaway, yeah. So it'll be... Uh... Here comes Jared Ix. He's trying to find a way through. When they go into the back stretch, he's going to hit Eli Warren, and that'll slide him down, and then that just creates the trouble from there. Uh, thankfully, the wreck went off the racing line, but yeah, that 17 truck ended up being an innocent victim. But Joe, back up to the front. We've got a big battle for the lead now going on. That's going to be uh, uh, Josh Bonwell, Ricky Howe Jr., and David Centini all mixing it up right now. Looks like they've all been swapping around here for the last minute or so. It's a very tight race. And Josh Bonwell seems like his truck's starting to tighten up, like what he was talking about. Can we go three Ooh. wide here for the lead? They're thinking about it going into three. Not quite so much. It's Josh Bonwell's going to slide down to the inside line. Yeah, that's Centini, uh, who's managed to take second away. Howell gives it up. Up in front of them, Josh Bonwell still has not relinquished the lead, though everybody's been trying. Don't forget Tyler Pluff. That's the fourth truck that you see back there. Ooh, gives away the inside. Bonwell allows Centini to step through the door, and he is not waiting. Back up to the front goes the number 12. They got the really slow truck here of Eckenberg in front of him. Oh, oh no! Wow! wow. <laughs> Bonwell with a save of the race! Just incredible. Let's watch the replay on this one. Lightning fast hands. He may have lost second place out of that, but at least he's still running. Truck. Yeah. I, 
I'm not exactly sure even what happened there. I mean, it looked like, you know, they, they saw Eckenberg's truck really slow in front of them, and then all of a sudden it's like, I don't know if Eckenberg maybe came down or they thought he was going to come down or something, but uh, either way, contact was made. Bonwell's miraculous save. So Tyler Pluff with Bonwell are fighting for third now. They've fallen off uh, that second and a half from the front two, and they've got an angry group of trucks behind them. That includes Cox, David McCullough, William Rucker, Hayes Booth all in there, Kenneth McCullough, Travis Rucker also, and they're gaining fast. And by the way, another truck's gonna fall out here. Peyton Howell, he was on the lead lap. His engine just blew. Ah, man. They are just dropping like flies. Attrition has been enormous today. You can see as we continue to watch this battle for third behind them, it's getting double file between Booth, Rucker, Rucker, uh, and Kenneth McCullough. This is all for eighth position. That would be Eckenberg. I'm wondering if his engine finally let go. He seems like he's unpowered. We were just talking about it. Sorry, we were just talking about it offline about a, a, a truck just on the apron going extremely slow. And I, yeah, he, he's silent. I think he's given up the ghost. So that'll be another casualty today. And on the low side, Kenneth McCullough in the 03 still holding off William Rucker. They're two by two there. Travis and Jeffrey Radke also waiting for something to open up ahead of them. Highline's starting to look pretty good on the way in, though, for the number, uh, I believe that's the 78 of Ruck, uh, Travis Rucker. So are we finally seeing that high line start to come in a little bit here now that we're getting some green flag racing. We just passed the halfway mark as well. These guys can keep it green. We'll see this thing wrap up in about 25 minutes. Yeah, now that it's gone a little ways, it's getting underway finally. Right on board with David McCullough. Looking back at that group, David riding in sixth place. They've all continued to lose ground on our top two though. David Centini and Ricky Howell have made this a two horse race essentially. This back group is essentially fighting for scraps. And now that Josh Bonwell has drifted upwards, he's losing positions. Clint Cox getting in there as well as David McCullough. Yeah, they're getting really racy back there. That's a, that's a hornet's nest compared to what they were having to face earlier. Bonwell finally gets down to the low line before Kenneth McCullough manages to get by. Hayes Booth is the one caught up on the high line in that number five. I was just looking at Ricky Howe just dropping like a rock. He did end up hitting the wall just a little while ago, so he's falling back into the clutches of these guys. And that's just going to allow David Santini here to start running away. You know, the other thing is, I wonder, did Bonwell with that contact... Did he get some damage that's hurting his pace? Because he's struggling at this point. He's just getting freight trained. Meanwhile, Clint hey, Cox. It is... does look like a little bit on his uh, his left front there. That's, so yeah, that's entirely possible. That's where a little bit of that rub happened. Clint, Clock, uh, Clint Cox has already gotten ahead of Ricky Howell. And that moves him up into the podium spot, proving why he's leading the championship right now. He is not quitting, coming back from a wreck earlier in this race and somehow finding pace out of that number three. Ooh, things getting tight between Ricky Howell and David McCullough. Had to get out of it to keep from drifting up into him. That's going to allow the other McCullough, Kenneth, to get through now. Yeah, they're just... Uh... They're just, you know, letting David lead the charge right now. And Kenneth is just following him up. And now they're going to be on Clint Cox here in just a moment, running in third. And, and yeah, that's what you were talking about there a minute ago there, Joe. I, if you would have told me, you know, 
30 minutes or so ago that Clint Cox was going to be in this kind of position. I said, no, his truck's too tore up. But, you know, he's been down pit road a lot. He's got a lot of that damage fixed. And he's running competitive times here so far for at least what's out there on the racetrack. So good for him. But I have a feeling he's getting ready to get swallowed up by the McCulloch brothers here any minute. Well, they might come uh, upon a driver who's going a little bit slower than them because Santini somehow has dropped Pluff and Pluff is being reeled in at a rate of knots by uh, Clint Cox, David McCullough, Kenneth McCullough. There's now only a second between them. Uh, just Santini, man, once he got clear, just setting the pace. And you're right, Joe. Tyler Pluff really starting to fall off a little bit. Let's see what his lap time is here this time by 32.77. Those guys behind him are actually two tenths slower. So maybe it was just a visual thing that looks like maybe they're uh, they're catching them by leaps and bounds. But that last time by there, or this last time through one and two, they look even closer. So interesting. McCullough though, 262. Looking at uh, Kenneth McCullough, 282. And now they're on the inside of Clint Cox. They're going to take that position. David McCullough up to third place now past Clint Cox. Oh, he's trying to get him down to the low line. Clint really wants to squeeze in that hole. Kenneth tried to get uh, there before he could, but he couldn't quite. Still, he's got a nose in. There goes Clint with the block down low making sure that he stays on the shortest line around the track behind them. Don't count out Travis Rucker in the 78. Oh, he gets a little bit loose. Oh, oh he's he coming back up on the track. He's in the grass. Uh, no caution so yet. Green. Oh, he's going to stay green somehow. Nope, oh, there, there it is. is. Oh, but that's a lot of positions lost. He falls all the way to 16th before the yellow comes out. Oh, and... and Kenneth McCullough's front end. I think he got into him there when he was sliding. Man, that uh, things got rough quickly. That, that was that was weird, Joe. It just seems like through th uh, three and four, Clint Cox just got off the gas, was, and was then that's when he got hit from behind. It didn't seem like he was loose or anything. He just got off the gas. Kenneth McCulloch didn't have anywhere to go. I, the best guess I've got is he was looking to come into pit lane and maybe didn't communicate well. Man, that was a hard hit from the Georgian. So where does this put us as we come back live? Well, David Santini is our leader. Tyler Pluff gets all that gap back that he lost to him. He's still in second place. David McCulloch is up in third. Kenneth, unfortunately, with heavy damage on the front. There you see the 03 is uh, in fourth position. There, He's definitely going to have to come in and get some repairs, but how fast is he going to be after this? You know, the part that I worry about, Joe, is the fact that the trucks, uh, they, uh, they increase the damage sensitivity on the front end, particularly when it comes to, to cooling. And is he going to have any kind of cooling issues over the next uh, couple laps? Well, that's a good point especially if he has to ride in someone's draft. Everybody coming down to their pit stalls. It's lap 63 here, so this is going to be perhaps our last pit of the race. Coming out front, looks like David Santini, Tyler Pluff back in second, David McCullough third. As expected, Kenneth is staying in for long repairs, so Jeffrey Radke up to fifth up well yeah up to fifth because raymond rittenauer did not come in for yeah, a stop. no he yeah he just drove through the pit lane so uh we're getting some information that he did call uh that he was going to be pitting did clint cox Okay. Sure everybody had their radio on then. Yeah, so, it, you know, if he communicated then and uh, wasn't given the, the room to come down, well, not much you can do about that. And I think that's Rittenauer. Nope, Rittenauer's going to stay out. So who is that coming in? That's Braden Johnson. And trying to catch who that other truck is. Rucker, I think. All right. 
Rittenauer now using a bit of alternate strategy to get himself up in the front, unless we got another case of a driver who uh, is just going to stay out. Josh Bonwell will get his lead lap back. Well, get I'll, back in the hunt. I can tell you that if Rittenhauer is actually staying out here, he's going to get swallowed up alive because old tires, unless we get another caution really quick, yeah, he's going to drop like a rock once we go back to green here. All right. Well, what's the 87 got under uh, up his sleeve then? So we, our our speculation about Bonwell, I think, maybe has uh, borne itself out, or at least all signs are really pointing to it, because Bonwell came in for about a 20 second stop last, and that obviously put him a lap down. But now he's managed to get back onto the lead lap. He's going to get that back here in a moment. Oh, there you go. There's Rittenauer. He doesn't like this strategy anymore. Uh, that's that's a good call for him. You know, and it, yeah, you know, you, you come in and you go back to get filtered out toward the back. But with as many cars that we still have running, it's not exactly the worst thing in the world. So uh, I think that's a wise decision. Just come in and get four fresh new ones here. How about Jim Westerfield? Starting from pit lane, he's up to P5 now. Matthew Lee's back in it. He's going to be in six on this restart, but we've seen he's not always the quickest here. There's Westerfield in the 35 on screen. Good. Restarted this time by lap 66, two-thirds of the way through. Had a nice long green flag run. Some fascinating developments about who's good over that long-term run as well. Santini certainly seems to be the one to watch out for. Nobody able to keep up with him. Pluff, after losing the draft, just fell like a rock. Can he change that this time? Mustang pace car getting ready to duck down into pit lane. Santini looking for that green flag. Is he going to go early? Yes, he is. Good jump there from David. Bluff already blocked out from that inside line as David McCullough had a nose in, but now he sees an opening, gets the clear, and covers him off behind them for fourth place. Side-by-side -side action between Ratke and Lee. Yeah, and that quickly goes to single files. They're coming out of two, but Ratke's still hunting here. Ah, he's going to go ahead and give him a little bit of a bump going into three. Trying to push him through the corner a touch. They get off each other here before they get fully into the corner. Behind them, Westerfield and Matt Quick still up there. Chad Ross and then uh, a little bit more uh, race here behind those guys, but uh, still up front. Uh, Santini, another great restart. I, I'm telling you, Joe, I really think he's one of the best ones in restarts here in the series. I I'm starting to agree with you here as Radke is eager to get by. We were riding on the bumper of Matthew Lee. Radke manages to finally take away that inside line. He doesn't want to lose touch with this, these top three. He can already see that gap building up. He is hustling through, and now he's got fourth place. Looks like he's going to bring a friend. That's Westerfield. I'm trying, and I'm, I'm actually impressed by how well Tyler Pluff and Dave McCullough have been able to stay with Santini here, at least right off the start. Uh, he could go back to the bottom line, but uh, David McCulloch, he's looking for a round. Right before the caution came out that last time, David McCulloch was the fastest truck on the racetrack. Now he's not making any huge moves to try and get by Pluff, but I wonder if he really wants to be in second place, if he's content to ride here since we've got a number of laps left. Doesn't really have an urgency to try to peel that second place away with a risky move. I really think just looking at what he's doing is he's just making sure that Tyler Pluff knows he's there. And, and maybe maybe trying to not necessarily make Tyler make a mistake, but trying to make him drive more aggressive than what he otherwise would. Maybe burn up his tires a little bit more. So that looks to me maybe what David's doing because you're right. He's not really sticking his nose totally in there just yet. And I think it'll stay like that until David Santini starts to try to drive away with this thing, which hasn't happened yet. Once Santini starts pulling away, that's when I think David might make a move. 
driver behind them now is no longer Radke, it's Jim Westerfield who moves into P4. Ooh, little look to the high side from Pluff. He's getting close to the back of Centini now. He Down just doesn't seem one. super anxious to make a move either. He's running slightly different lines. Maybe he's just trying to keep some air on the front though. Behind them, I do believe they are dropping Westerfield. I've taken a look at their lap comparisons. Westerfield looks about a tenth off versus the top three. Ooh, Ooh here comes Tyler Fluff having a little bit of a fender yeah. on the outside. Just but not a good run, and by that, he's going to end up giving up the position here to David McCulloch, I think. David McCulloch, big run on the inside here, coming through three and four, the outside of four. And by the start time, the start finish line, he'll be able to nose ahead of him. Will he be able to take that position by himself by the time they get into one? He does. Move David McCulloch up in the first, or second place with eyes now on your leader, David Centini. I was about to say that move looked like it was going to leave himself vulnerable, and certainly David McCulloch did not wait. Even though he had a runoff of two, Tyler Pluff elected to wait behind the number eight machine. Coming yeah, up to 25 laps to go pretty soon, and Centini's not been able to scamper away like before. No, he's not. Now he's got somebody that was, you know, granted he was a couple of seconds back before the yellow came out. Now he's right on his bumper, and that being Dave McCulloch, who was faster once again, right before we had that yellow flag last time. So Centini's going to have to work here, I think, to stay in front of the lead because now that McCulloch is past Pluff, now it's go time, I think, here. Back around for another lap. If they go green the whole way, Adam, is tire management going to be a thing as well? And will it be those who are kind to their tires by the end of what would be, well, like 40 laps or so? Yeah, and you don't see a ton of fall off on times here, but you do tell the fall off in the handling of the trucks, and Atlanta is known for being abrasive on tires. Right now, these three haven't had a whole lot of action. They've been very, uh, very chess match like in their moves and their decisions. As we jump back behind them, this is for that fourth position, fifth position rather. Uh, Matt Quick up in front of the side-by-side -side action of Ross and Booth. It's Booth on the low side in the number five, the number 38 of Chad Ross up there. Ooh, finds momentum though. Booth has no response. Chad Ross fully ahead and clear. He comes down to that white line. Now sets his sights on Matt Quick. All single file now at this point. Quick should be promoting himself up a position or two after this race is done with Melvin DNFing. Bothwell, from what I understand, is back out but well down the order, or was at least at one point. Yeah, we got a number of guys out there that are still turning laps. Including Brandenburg, who's you know 52 down. He's trying to do what he can. Braden Johnson's two down. Uh, outside of that, actually, though, those are the only cars laps down actually running. Everybody else is on the lead lap with uh, 20 cars on the racetrack right now. Small correction for myself. Bothwell is on the lead lap right now. He's actually running in ninth, but he is behind quick. Matthew Lee's damage is definitely a hindrance here. He's doing all he can, but he's already fallen to 11th. His speed is just far enough off that everybody's making mincemeat of him as soon as they get close to him. I think uh, Jared Ix has come down pit road here. He was involved in some action earlier, but he's going to give up his spot on the lead lap. It looks like he took just a touch of fuel. Hmm, maybe it was closer than we thought on fuel then. Gets back going once more. Top three have now stretched to about a second and a half over Jim Westerfield. Even though Jim was quicker than everybody else, he's just losing inch by inch up to the podium. 
The good news is, is that uh, he's been holding everybody behind well at bay, so he's not under any threat. Well, we'll add another truck out there just turning laps. It's uh, Jose Medina has come back out, 72, getting ready to be 73 laps down. That is one tore up race truck, but he's out there. Don't think he's going to be eligible for the 80%. No, <laughs> no. Just a hunch. There's I June. think he's just trying to grab a few of the spots from some of the guys that fell out ahead of him. And then there's Jose that we saw on screen there. Our leaders are actually coming up on those lap trucks. Number 22 going to stay high and out of the way. Just wait till we get the new damage model on these trucks, Joe. And Medina's out there with a fender flapping in the wind and <laughs> all that other kind of stuff. That's coming. At some point. Ooh, coming. Clint Cox is in. Jeff, uh, what's 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 uh, Clint Cox doing? Is he taking fuel? Yeah, it looks like he is just going to take on a small splash of fuel, maybe to get him to the end here. So he's out and going once again. Well, I think I called it too early. Yeah, I think I called it well too early. Jim Westerfield is now in pit lane. This looks like fuel calls all around here, Jeff. Yeah, these guys are just making sure that they, with McCullough's up there, you know they got one in the bag. And Matthew T. Lee, you guys all know how Matthew Lee has been good with the fuel mileage race. So it's going to be interesting to see where these guys fall in line, who took some, who took none, and who's been saving. Uh, my guess would be McCullough's. Yeah, Matthew Lee, and you know, maybe that's a good point. I wonder if that slow pace is down to fuel then, potentially? Instead of him just being damaged, this promotes him back up to eighth. The top three still have not pitted, and we've got 15 laps to go. Maybe, potentially, hoping for a caution. Trap some of these cars a lap down. Just back, I'm trying to see who's our highest pitter. I think Brad Bothwell right now. He comes back out in 13th position. Just ahead of Matt Quick. Clint Cox is gaining on them very fast. Tyler Pluff now pitting. All right, that's one of our top three. That leaves only Centini and McCullough. Pluff may be looking for the undercut here. It's been staying green so far. The ca last caution was quite a ways ago. This could yet pay off. It could. And I mean, if, uh, if Pluff's coming in, I mean, that's almost guaranteeing that Centini's probably going to have to come in as well. So this is, this is going to get interesting here. I mean, who might try it? And, and, and how close are they? I think is the, is the other question too. I mean, this is, uh, if you were going to see a bunch of guys that are worried about maybe being a lap or two short, you probably wouldn't see them pit until they were a little bit closer to the end of the race. But I, I just, uh, we're still 13 laps from the end of this thing, Joe. I'm kind of worried here. And interesting to point out as we go to the battle for fourth here, that's Rucker on the low side, Ratke on the high side. Let's stay on this. But uh, uh, now that we've had Pluff and Bothwell in and out one lap apart to tell you the advantage that pitting earlier has given Bothwell who was back in ninth is only three seconds behind Pluff. Look at it. Uh, yeah, Bonwell just pitted. David McCulloch, uh, he's actually kind of fallen off Santini here the last little bit. I mean, not by a ton. Just a little bit. He actually had to get out of the gas there coming out of two. I thought he was going toward the wall. Hmm. The plot thickens. All right. We're going to be 10 to go pretty quickly. Santini and McCullough both stay out. Hayes Booth, though, has pitted now. He goes a lap down. Pluff is easily going to be able to go by. Ooh, and is Bonwell in long? What do you got, Jeff? 
It looks like Brad Bonwell is stuck on pit road. He, 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 that was an extra, extra long stop, stop. So that's really, really going to hurt him. He's definitely going to be a lap down. It's going to take a lot of work from him in these closing laps to get back up there. It, he's, he's in big trouble. Actually showing now on the scoring is two laps down. I just saw a truck on the inside of the racetrack. That's Hayes Booth. Did something happened to Hayes Booth. No, he just pitted, I believe. No, no, he uh, he was coming up to speed. He was coming out of pit road, and the back oh. end came around on him. I think he kept it from going completely around. Yeah, only about halfway around. <laughs> still, still enough. If it had been in the racing line, it would have been a problem. Jeff, you've been racing in these trucks. You sound like uh, you you got an idea of what caused this. Yeah, that wonderful new tire model that iRacing rolled out this year is really, really, really sensitive on cold tires. And if you get too into it too much on, on exiting pit road, it will make you pay. And I think that's what happened to Hayes Booth today. Yeah, and that's interesting to note there, you know, because Hayes, everybody else has taken fuel. Hayes did take right sides. Ooh, and one of our McCullers is in. I think that's Kenny. Yeah. So the 03 pits, Pluff easily goes by. Battle for fifth place still on. We were watching this earlier. Rucker, Radke, Pluff getting his lap back the from the now. Oh! Coming in. McCulloch's falling. Radke was in the wall. Everything's happening at once. Oh, and they've uh, Centini and McCulloch had an adventure. At least McCulloch did. I thought he was going to be getting caught for speeding there, but he's getting woke down in time. William Rucker, everybody of that group is in. This, I think, puts Tyler Pluff in the catbird seat. Oh, Centini's taking right sides. Pluff back out and around. Oh, and he's taking all four. McCulloch's already away. Tyler just came across the line. So, and no, up Centini's to still the there. Front? Something is wrong with Centini. Centini is still on pit road. Oh my goodness. Our leader currently is Travis Rucker. Yeah, Travis Rucker from what I'm seeing. David, David McCullough is in second, and Pluff is going to scream on by because he's already got the pace. So it's a battle for second place, potentially for the lead, because Rucker is just coming out and is not up to speed. Pluff, with that move around the outside, is your leader now with six laps to go. He only just now pulled away. Oh, what a crushing blow for Centini. Westerfield moves up into third with his early uh, call. Matt Quick up to fourth. Cox recovers to P5. Five to go at the line, and Tyler Pluff is sitting pretty. Now that McCull is trying to get heat in those tires, could he maybe come back into it? Jim Westerfield. Oh, oh, David McCullough was pushing. He's coming back across the track. Oh, the outside wall. No caution. He manages to catch it. That Both truck Quick is and Westerfield though. avoid him. This is the replay from David McCullough. Oh, his truck well, I thought the tires were getting up to temp. Yeah, he's, he's still having issues here. I, I would imagine he smashed his suspension yeah, he, with that move. This truck's destroyed. Oh, terrible break. He had it till he didn't. Well, Westerfield is liking that because that gets him up to second place. Quick is as well. He's finishing out the podium. Clint Cox might be a little bit too far back to get into the top three this time. He's about two seconds back from the number 89. And they're already down to three to go. Color me impressed with the number 39 as we now ride on board with number 89 in third place. He could still get this second spot away from Jim Westerfield. 
two laps to go now. One more when he gets to the line this time. Matt Quick, though he is close to Jem Westerfield, has really got to be much more on the bumper to really try and take that away. Our podium might be solidified unless we have some big dramas. White flag waves for the number 39. He gets ready to lap Kenneth McCullough Jr. Who would have thought, based on some of their pace earlier today, and Tyler Pluff with a master stroke on pit lane. As he comes through three and four, Tyler Pluff gonna get his first win of the season. Brilliantly done here at Atlanta for the 39 winning today at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Westerfield in second, quick in third. Cox should hold on to his points lead with a solid fourth place. Ross comes in with a, with a top five. Matthew Lee, don't give up on him. He wound up with seventh after all was said and done. Last truck on the lead lap going to be Hayes Booth in 13th place. That's going to take us to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because we'll have all the upcoming races here on GSRC on your screen. Speedway round eight was fascinating here in the FEGPC iRacing Flea Market Winter Truck Series. Tyler Pluff was our winner, another new winner this season. We've only had two drivers that have won more than once even uh, this whole season long. We'll talk more about that later. Jim Westerfield with a nice podium in second place. Matt Quick didn't put a qualifying time in, started 36, wound up third after all is said and done. Clint Cox, uh, took fourth place with Chad Ross in P5. You got Brad Bothwell in the sixth position. Matthew Lee, somehow, I think probably the only driver, managed to finish where he started, seventh. <laughs> so 
Uh, Jared X followed him home in eighth position. Travis Rucker with a ninth place, and Raymond Rittenauer in P10. Yeah, going to 11th position, Jeffrey Radke uh, coming home in uh, 11th there. William Rucker in 12th, Hayes Booth in 13th. I'm going to read the guys who are one lap down because some of these were very close to not being one lap down. Kent McCulloch, David Santini, we had a report that maybe he ran out of gas and maybe was having issues getting the truck refired, and that might have been why he was stuck on pit road there. Cost him a chance at the win. He's going to come home 15th. Ricky Howell Jr. in 16th. 17th position is Josh Bonwell. And uh, David McCulloch, of course, we cover, uh, covered his slap with the wall there. Uh, everybody else uh, going through the race, major problems, several big wrecks in this one, Joe. Yeah, certainly a lot of DNFs and a few that tried to come back out to see if they could salvage a few spots. But one driver that certainly had his uh, finger on the pulse of things was Tyler Pluff. A perfect call down pit lane. Tyler, that was incredible. We thought that maybe everybody could get to the end on fuel, but uh, it seems you knew early that that was not the case. Yeah, I had it uh, figured out right when we went green um, for that last run. If it went green, that we needed to come up with uh, some solution to get some fuel, maybe get a little tire in it and uh, and get to the finish. And it uh, looks like we were the best ones to do that. Now, obviously, you were a, a little bit at risk of a caution coming in and pitting because that could have trapped you a lap down. So, uh what I mean, how do you kind of formulate when's the best time? Do you uh, try and go for something statistical of when you think there's a least likely caution or is it just uh, a wing and a prayer sort of thing? Uh, it was a little bit of both. So I kind of kind of looked um, there. There weren't too many trucks that were clean at the end of the race, um, to, to put it nicely. So, um, you know, lat, fewer cars, trucks stuck together definitely played a role. But uh, basically, when we decided to pit is when the truck decided to get a little tight and you lost some time on the track. So that is when we decided to pit, calculated the fuel that we needed to end it, threw some right side tires on it to keep it competitive. And uh, the uh, snap-on Chevy Silverado was, uh, wasn't the fastest, but dang, we got to victory lane. Awesome stuff. Uh, this obviously... Uh helps you out as uh, you were a little bit farther down in ninth place, tied with a few other people. You've got one more round to get in the top four to fight for $500 or potentially uh, a set of pedals. Do you think you can do that? Uh, I'm going to need a little bit of help. The The start of the year did not work out as I had wanted to. Had some bad races at Texas and uh, Iowa. Um, and it kind of put me behind the eight ball. So I knew hadn't into this week it was going to take a couple of good runs and a little bit of luck falling my way and check one off for a little bit of luck and a in a win might be able to repeat it next week and we'll see how it shakes out but we're going to give it our best great stuff would you like to thank anybody before we let you go yeah, i'd like to like uh like to thank you guys up in the booth for uh broadcasting the races do appreciate it and everyone that's watching out there um I'd like to thank my wife who puts up with my sim racing and supports me in any way she can. Uh, I'd like to thank my guys at uh, FMP racing that uh, run with and help me on that last strategy call. Couldn't have done it without them. And uh, obviously uh, FEG PC for putting on the league and uh, getting all the guys running together. That was Tyler Pluff, your winner here today at Atlanta. Up next, uh, we have Jeffrey Smith running into Jim Westerfield, who took second place out there. Yes, sir. Jim, man, I've been waiting. I'm not even going to lie. My guys, GRSRC guys, they all know. Our fans are going to know. Me and Jim go way back, and I've been waiting all season to do this interview. How do you feel, buddy? feel pretty good. That was a good finish there. Definitely needed that. Who made the call? How did, how did you make that call to, to – wind up second there at the end how did how did you do that what what went uh just being patient most of the race and staying out of all them cautions uh i stayed uh in the back with the mccullough group there and um that last pit stop i decided to go in before the top three did just to get a little edge uh tyler still got me a little bit there though yeah we saw you start from the pits tonight we 
you know, that, that that's a 50, 50 shot right there, whether that works out or not. And it worked out great for you. That's freaking awesome. Good job guy. Uh, do you have anybody you want to, Oh no! Thank you guys for broadcasting and uh, everybody in the league for uh, doing a great race and uh, via Wobbles Rescue Center for uh, rescuing all them pit bulls and always remember uh, don't shop to dot. Well, we appreciate it, buddy. You take care of yourself and good luck going forward. Thank you. That was second place finisher Jim Westerfield. Uh, definitely concur as an animal lover myself about uh, glad to see pit bulls getting saved. Meanwhile, Adams caught up with our third place finisher, Matt Quick. Or we thought we did for a second there. Let's see if we could get him in with us. Adam's going to be talking to Matt about what looked like a bit of an up and down race. Yeah, Matt, you know, it looked like there for a little while, uh, you were just kind of wanting to, to hang in the back. Uh, when did you decide that it was go time and that you're going to start trying to make your way up the front? Well, I was just trying to think of a strategy, what, around lap 60 or whatever, 50 or something. I knew I could make it on one more stop and uh, if it had one green, that last question to come up. I could barely have enough fuel, maybe clutching it coming off before. And that's kind of was my game plan, running as long as I could. And that Kasha came out, and I was like, I came on pit road, and I was like, well, I'm going to go top off. And all of a sudden, I saw it. I was in ninth. I was like, I think I could hang here. And I saw all the damaged cr trucks around me, and I was like, well, I, I don't want to try to fight past them. So I was like, well, I'm going to kind of keep my distance from between everybody, kind of like interstate driving on, on icy roads, just kind of like keep some distance in between people and – Go from there, and all of a sudden, it, it straightened out, and those top three cars were ahead by three seconds, and it was kind of go time, so I, I went. So, and then uh, I decided on the last stop to take two tires, like, halfway through, and uh, it worked out pretty well. I, I mean, finished third, pretty dang good to me. Yeah, it ultimately ended up working out. I mean, starting 36, didn't set a time. And, uh, you, like, I, you know, you told us, uh, you didn't really decide to go until tail end of the very race. Now I got to ask you though, of course there was that, uh, one truck that glitched up from the wall earlier, got shot in the orbit and came down right beside you. Did you need a change of underwear after that one? Oh, well, I was trying to time the landing. I saw the thing glitch up there and I was like, all right, well, it still gave me a four X. I was so irritated. So I went to pit road and I was like, well, it didn't, I didn't hear the, you know, the bang or anything like that. I just saw the green 4X pop up for damage. And I was like, crap. So I went to pit road and got no damage from it. But I was like, <laughs> I, I slowed down. I went low. I thought I was going to bounce on top of the hot, on high on the track there. And I don't know. I misjudged, but I'm glad I didn't get any damage from that. But yes, I kind of cracked myself a little bit. <laughs> well, hey, Matt, uh, good job here tonight, man. And uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you. You know, hopefully you have a good result next week. And then we get to talk to you in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, hopefully so. I just want to thank uh, Ray right now, my teammate, and uh, this our top finish for our team so far for Dingleberry, Dingleberry Motorsports so far. So hopefully we keep hanging around. We just just a hair off of first place there and hair off a of second. So we're number one and number two. So let's just knock her out. There you go. That was Matt Quick. Joe, back to you. Yep, and I believe that's going to close up our interviews here for today. Again, we won't be back next week, but we will be here for the finale. So uh, definitely keep following up. A big thank you goes out to our sponsors, FEGPC. Again, if you want to check them out, you can find them at FEGPC.net. And then, of course, there's also the iRacing flea market, which you can find over on Facebook. They're going to be uh, doing the draw soon for that $100, so go and check that out. Not as many, not as many people involved in this draw today, I don't think. Uh, also, thanks to companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast. They're listed here on your screen. Additional thanks to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get hold of more of her great work. And also thanks to the team today, Sean, Adam, Dougie, as well as Jeff Smith. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, Instagram, GSRC underscore Ram. We've got a merchandise store. The link is in the description below. If you want to type it in yourself, though, it's GSRC.StoreNV.com. Make sure and subscribe by clicking the big red button that says subscribe. The next race, as we mentioned, for our coverage is going to be Homestead. That'll be Monday, February 3rd at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. 
Uh, and then, of course, the next race for them is going to be Charlotte Motor Speedway. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard, we'll see you on the track.